Mic check, one, two, one, two. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Tank B Chopping, and I'm back with another haircut tutorial. All right, guys, so as you can see, we jumping straight into this haircut. Y'all seen the before, y'all seen what we was working with, y'all seen the canvas. Uh, all we gonna be doing is like a mid-drop fade, so I'm starting off with my number four guard on my Stylecraft Mythics. And what I'm doing is, I'm just I'm just debulking the sides right now. I'm uh, floating that clipper up in a way, trying not to create too harsh of a line, but I'm setting my initial shape with this number four. So I'm basically gonna be doing this shape when I set in my uh, guidelines also. And as you can see, I don't wanna go all the way up on the crown. I know a lot of times barbers uh, cut the crown off. And I used to be one of those barbers that would do that, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, you just, sometimes you can't be cutting that crown off, man. I mean, I understand sometimes the clients want that, but I try to, try to steer them away from that you know I feel like haircuts look better when you leave that crown area a little more fuller so you know I made sure to drop it in the back that way we didn't cut off that crown area all right so now what I'm doing is I'm going in with my number six guard so I started off with my four I debulked it uh, and now I'm going in with my six guard I normally don't use a six but due to his hair texture and the, and the way his hair was laying and the way the four was kind of just pushing the hair out the way and not really cutting it I decided to hit it with that number six guard uh, that way it can fade more into the top uh, like I said I normally don't do a number six guard but I just felt in this situation it was a good idea for me to, uh, for me to use all right, so now that the debulking set, uh, part of the haircut is done, I'm going in with my Babyliss trimmers, and all I'm doing is I'm setting in my guideline, basically setting up the, the shape that I want the fade to look like, you know what I'm saying? So as you can see, we're doing about a mid fade on the sides, and then in the back, we are dropping it. So like I said, guys, we are doing like a mid drop fade. Uh, we are going to leave the length on top. He wants to keep the length. So you know what I'm saying? We're just doing that on both sides, starting off like a mid fade on the side, and then just dropping it down on the back. Now that that is done, I'm going in with my shaver. I believe this is my Black Babylon shaver. Yeah, it's my Black Babylon shaver. Uh, and y'all know how to do it, guys. I'm taking all the sides of the hair off. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting down as low as I can possibly get it. And the closer I get to that line, that initial bald guideline, I'm making sure I'm flicking out. I'm making sure I'm relieving some pressure. That way I don't leave too harsh of a line because then it's going to be too hard. For, well, not too hard, but it's going to be a little more difficult for me to take out that bottom line, that initial bald guideline. And obviously, I want to make this haircut as easy as I can possibly make for myself. And remember guys, when it comes to balding out, when it when it really comes to any step you do on the haircut, you want to make sure you're really consistent with it. And that's, that's the reason why y'all see me going over the sides so much. I want to make sure it's all down to that length. Uh, just, just, you know, I want it all down as short as we can possibly get it. All right, so now what I'm doing here is, guys, I have my Mythics once again. I have my lever open all the way. And you can use any clipper. I'm just using my Mythics because I really like them. To me, they, they work really well. So... That's why I'm using them on this haircut. But nonetheless, I'm going in with my clipper all the way open. I'm setting in my next guideline. And as you can see, I'm coming up about half an inch to three quarters of an inch or so. And I'm still following that same shape that I created with my ball, you know, with my trimmers. Uh, like I said, guys, I want to keep that shape. We want it a little higher on the sides and then drop down on the back. That way we keep that crown area a little full. So uh, that's what I did. I set in my next guideline. And as you can see here, I just adjusted my lever halfway closed. And I'm coming up, you know, about halfway into this section and then I'm going to adjust my uh, my lever closed notch by notch. I said that weird because I had to think about it. I'm going to adjust my lever closed notch by notch and drop down a little lower each time. So by the time I get to my lever all the way closed, I should be attacking that bottom line. And for the most part, it's going to get rid of this line, but it's not going to take it away completely. And uh, that's totally fine because I know that I can always just come back in with my trimmers if needed to get that line all the way out. And people always ask me why it doesn't get that line all the way out. Well, for me, when I gap my clippers, I don't gap them like all the way, all the way. Like they're pretty close, but I don't have them flush and the reason why i don't have them flush is i use my clippers to cut every client like even kids and if i have them closed all the way sometimes little kids like in the back of the neck area they start raising their shoulders up so you know the way the clipper attacks them and nicks them sometimes so that's why i don't zero gap my clippers uh, all the way but anyway, going back to this haircut, uh, what I'm doing here is I have my number one guard lever open and I'm setting in my next guideline. Still coming up about three quarters of an inch, half an inch to three quarters of an inch following that same shape and using a flick out motion. 
And now that that guideline is set in, now I'm going in with my number two guard, lever open. And as you can see, I'm still using that flick out motion. Uh, I know my steps are normally different. Uh, you know, they're a little different, but I just decided I've been doing them. I've been doing them this way for the past couple videos. And I really like doing them this way because I can see my guidelines a little better. And I just feel that it makes my haircuts more efficient. So I may start doing my haircuts like this. All right, now that I'm done with my number two guard open, I'm going in with my number three guard open, following the same shape, still using that flick out motion. And I'm just trying to float this, you know, this clipper out and uh, basically trying not to cut off too much bulk because I want to keep some of that bulk right there. But at the same time, I do want to give a faded look. So I, 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 oh, I stuttered a lot right there. I have to make sure that I'm using that flick out motion and I'm floating that clipper up and away. All right, so now I'm reverting back to my number four guard. And normally I don't go back to this number four guard after I use it to debulk, but obviously there still needed to, uh, there still needed some work to be done. So I put that number four guard back on there and I'm just adjusting my lever as needed. Still using that flick out motion, still floating my clipper up in a way, still just trying to guide this clipper out. That way I give a nice faded uh, transition from the short hair to the long hair on top. All right, so now that that is done, I'm going in with my zero guard or my 116 guard, whatever you want to call it. It's the smallest guard that we have. Uh, I'm going in with my lever all the way open, which basically makes this a number one guard. And I'm coming up, you know, right below what I did with my one guard open. So, and, I, and I am using a flick out motion. So as you can see, I'm flicking out that clipper. And as you can see, it's erasing this line, not all the way, but it's lighting, it's lighting it up a lot. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep adjusting my clipper closed, moving my way downward into this line. This bottom line is all the way faded out. And, and same thing with this line, guys. If this, if this line doesn't come out completely, I know that I, I can always just go on with my clipper lever open and take away that bottom line. But for the most part, I'm going to try to do as much as I can with this guard, with the zero guard. So as you can see, I'm doing some corner blending, you know what I'm saying, some flick out motion. You know, I'm just trying to use all the techniques that I know how to use to get these lines to, uh, to go away. You know what I'm saying? So now that that is done, I'm actually going, uh, this is my one and a half guard. And I did have to check my clipper as you see me right there. I had to make sure I was using the one and a half guard. Uh, lever is open and I'm attacking them dark areas that you see in the middle of this fade but i'm still using that flick out motion i do not want to create another line so as you can see the, the blend is already it, it's pretty much there like yeah there needs some work to be done but the blend is there so i don't want to mess anything up so i'm making sure that i'm flicking out i'm adjusting my lever as needed you know doing a couple you know a couple strokes and then really seeing what that clipper is doing before i just keep just digging into this haircut and i'm not saying that i'm digging into the haircut but sometimes you can catch yourself digging into the haircut if you're trying to like chase a line or something so you want to make sure you're paying close attention to what's going on and now i'm just detailing it i believe this is my number one guard yeah that was my number one guard i was just detailing it a little more now i'm going in with my number three guard and I'm attacking the top of this area. And I'm not really, not that I'm not focused on this top area, this longer hair, because I'm gonna go ahead and do some uh, some shear over comb work with my blending shears to blend all that in. So as you can see, I'm making sure I'm combing the hair down. And as you can see, guys, like I don't know if you really pay attention to when I'm, when I'm doing this shear over comb with the blending shears, but I'm not like just cutting off a bunch of hair. I'm really just, you know, coming at these ends, taking a little bit off, combing it, seeing how it falls. And if it doesn't look right, then I'll take off a little more. But you don't want to go too deep in with them uh, blending shears uh, because then it's going to look really, really choppy. So I'm just really just taking off the ends and I'm floating that, not the clipper, but I'm floating that comb up and away while using the blending shears. That way it's giving that, it's basically the same technique that I do with my clipper just with the shears and it's still giving a nice faded look. So that's what I'm doing here, guys. I want to make sure that I'm taking my time, making sure that I'm paying attention to what I'm doing and not cutting off too much hair. That way I don't give a choppy look. All right, so now that that part is done, I'm gonna go ahead and line him up. As you can see, I'm using my comb, my comb to hold up his hair. Uh, I could have clipped the hair, but for me, sometimes this is just quicker for me. I don't have to grab a clip. I just comb the hair up and I start lining them up. And I started off in the middle of his forehead where his hairline starts, created an initial guideline, and then I'm just following that line all the way over until I get to that vertical bar. And 
And remember guys, when it comes to lining up, you don't want to push the hairline too far back. Uh, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with taking off a little bit of hair if it's needed, but don't you don't want to overdo it, but at the same time you don't want to underdo it. I see a lot of barbers when it comes to lining up, they're like scared to scared to touch the hairline and like i've said it before guys you're gonna have to cut hair for that line to look crisp you know what i'm saying don't be scared to line them up and cut some hair off now i'm not saying push them back you want to give them what's called i guess you can say a controlled pushback because you're controlling exactly how much hair you're taking off and this i don't even know why i said control pushback because you're not even pushing it back you're just making sure it's I guess it is kind of pushed back enough to where it gives a sharp line without going too far into the hairline. But anyways, as you can see guys, once I put that line in there, I'm going back in to do some detail work. And when it comes to detailing guys, you can use whatever guards you feel is necessary. Sometimes what I do is when I fade up, I come back and I detail by fading down and then vice versa. So if I start off my fade fading down, then I would detail by fading up. And that's just some little different ways you can come in. Uh, always start with a bigger guard than you expect that you need. So if you think you need a number one guard probably put a number one and a half or a two on there start doing it with that first and if that doesn't do anything then go down to that number one guard because you don't want to mess up the blend that you already have like my blend already looks good i don't want to mess anything up i just want to touch it up and make it look even cleaner And to me, I, I think this fade is looking like it's coming together. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, this is a hard haircut. Not necessarily because it's like, it's harder to fade, but it's just a lot of hair going from short to long. And you want to make sure you don't take it too high. And you just want to make sure that that blend is there, that gradient is there without going too far into the top of the hair. But anyways, guys, we're moving on to the opposite side of this haircut. As y'all just saw the other side, it came together pretty nicely. Uh, I may go back and do some detail work. I'm not 100% sure if I did or if I didn't, but it looked pretty good. So I decided to move on to the other side. And on this side, guys, we're going to be doing the same exact thing that we did on the left side. Uh, that's basically it. Yeah, I'm doing the same exact thing. The only difference is here is, I don't know if y'all can see right, you know, right above the parietal ridge area. Right right around that parietal ridge area, his hair wants to go up. Like, so it was kind of difficult. But as you can see, you know, I'm still working at it. Still using my my big, my bigger guards, floating my clipper out. Doing the same steps, but I just had to do them slightly differently. Like, there will be some times where I have to comb the hair down and hold it down with my comb and cut it with my clipper. Just be, basically kind of like a clipper. See right there? kind of like a clipper over comb technique because his hair didn't want to come down and wanted to stick straight up but if i would have left it that way you know what i'm saying it wouldn't have been completely faded it would have been like more disconnected and i know that's not what he was looking for he wasn't looking for a disconnected haircut he wanted it all to look faded so i had to comb some of that hair down and that happens sometimes guys like not everybody's hair is going to be the same on each side not everyone's hair is going to lay down perfectly sometimes you have to manipulate the hair with combs and sprays and brushes and blow dryers and you know all the tools that us barbers use sometimes you got to manipulate the hair a certain way that way you can make sure it's faded properly and you give that look that you're looking for so that's just something you're gonna have to learn to do you know as you progress in the barber you know in your barber career and that's something i've learned with a lot like before like years ago i wouldn't use any blow dryer i wouldn't use any product when i was cutting the hair i would just cut the hair and now it's like now that i've gotten more mature in my barbering career i learned that sometimes these tools help us more than not so you know ain't nothing wrong with using the tools you got to make sure that the haircut comes out great and make sure that they that it's easier you know what i'm saying but nonetheless guys we we basically finished that side of the haircut and as you can see i'm lining them up in the front and all i'm doing is matching this side to the opposite side still doing the same thing with my comb pushing the hair out the way while i'm lining them up and like i said this might not be the best thing to do it probably is better to get a hair clip or you know them hair grippers but i was just i don't want to necessarily say being lazy but i just didn't have you know one in you know in sight or in you know in my view or anywhere where i can grab it real quick so i just use the comb and that's perfectly fine also i'm used to doing that so it's something that i'm used to doing so it's easy for me but if you're not used to doing it i would not do it i would put the hair clip because there has been times where i've seen people try to comb the hair up and then edge it up and the hair falls and then they line up the hair and it's they cut too much off and yeah so if it's something you, you don't really know how to do use a hair clip or use hair grippers guys but going back into this side of the haircut, as you can see, I'm doing some uh, shear over comb, some blending shear over comb, basically just, you know, knocking off some of that bulk, making sure it looks nice and faded. And I'm going back in doing some detail work. And y'all know how I do my detail work, guys. I just go in with the bigger guard that I originally think, uh, use the corners, flick at it a little bit, see if it's taking out any of them dark areas. And if it's not, then I move my way down to another guard. And that's basically what we're doing on this side of the cut, guys. Like, I think this cut's coming out good. Uh, y'all let me know what y'all think about this haircut so far. Y'all let me know if y'all if think I'm attacking this haircut 
haircut properly if y'all think i could have done you know something a little different or something better let me know like i'm always up to hear what y'all got to say and y'all's opinions on my haircuts guys like i really appreciate all the feedback y'all be giving me so please make sure to get action get action get active in that comment section and let me know what y'all think about this cut so far Alright, so now we're moving on to the back. Now, it's been a while since I actually recorded me doing the back of a haircut. And that's just due to time. Like, you know, putting this this uh, camera up and moving it to, to film properly what I'm trying to film. It takes a little bit of time. So, most of the time, I just record either one side or both sides. And I just leave the back or don't even record the lineup. You know, I try to do different things. But at the same time, it's like I can't really record all of it because sometimes I'm on a schedule. Like, for instance, like if I have someone after him, I wouldn't been, I wouldn't have been able to cut the back, but or not cut the back, but wouldn't have been able to record the back. But luckily, I had no one after him, so I said, you know what, I can take a little bit of time to uh, to record me li uh, not lining up, but record me cutting the back. And basically, when it comes to doing the back, guys. You're going to do the same exact steps. The only difference is since I dropped it in the back, I want to make sure that I'm following that uh, that same shape. And I don't want to cut off too much hair from the crown area. So uh, the back is basically like, I don't want to say it's the most important part of the haircut, but it is one of the most impor important parts because this is the part for me that ties it, ties it all in together. Like if I don't do this back properly, the left side isn't going to look like it matches the right side due to the back. So you want to make sure you keep that same shape. You want to make sure you're following your guidelines that you initially put in that way it keeps that same shape and it just flows all together nicely and even though i was talking about earlier how i normally don't record the back due to time i didn't record me lining them up with the razor but y'all saw me do the edge up with the trimmer so it's the same thing guys you know what i'm saying like i just hit it with the razor afterwards but i wanted to record this instead of me doing the lineup so i'm hoping that y'all y'all liking this uh this angle a little better you know what i'm saying i mean, I mean like i said I, i'm gonna be doing both here and there like, i'm gonna be switching it up sometimes i'm gonna record the lineup sometimes i'm just gonna record me doing the back of the head i'm gonna try to give y'all different uh different angles and different perspectives and different views of my cuts and everything man like, i'm just trying to give the best that i can give for y'all and i really appreciate y'all for rocking with your boy man it really means a lot uh, i've been grinding and y'all been helping push my name out there like not saying that i'm i'm you know a big youtuber but y'all have been helping me my subscribers have been going up and i really appreciate it guys and that's why i try to get back to y'all so much like when i get new clippers and stuff if i'm not going to use them i'll give them away you know what i'm saying just because i really appreciate all that y'all have done for me like y'all understand how much it means to me like when i first started this channel i didn't think it was gonna get do do much and I mean, yeah, I'm only at like 3,500 subscribers, but we moving, man. That's that's the main point is we moving, and that's something that I really appreciate, guys. So make sure to smash that like button, man. I really appreciate it, man. But anyways, uh, y'all let me know what you think about this cut, man. I'm going to stop talking for a little bit. Y'all make sure to follow my boy Tito Beats. Uh, y'all make sure if y'all like this mythic, uh, this StyleCraft mythic, you can go to the StyleCraft website and use my code TANK10, save you a little bit of money. And uh, any other tools y'all see in this video, you can go to my description, and I'll have the link in my description. Alright YouTube, this is the final cut, this is the finished product, y'all let me know what y'all think about this haircut in the comment section guys, if y'all like this haircut, please make sure to smash that like button, also if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe one time for your boy, and remember guys, if y'all like any of these tools, I have the tools in my description, or you can go to the StyleCraft or Gamma website and use my code TANK10, also go to the Illusion website, use my code TANK15, save yourself a little bit of money, uh, if you're in the Houston area, you need a haircut, you can go to my website, tankbechopping.com, you can book an appointment with your boy man, let's get it, I greatly appreciate it YouTube, until next time, let's go.